Hi, my name is Lisa Lund. I'm the Director of Educational Technology and Library Services, and we're going to explore creating our own activities and thinking about that we want to use our own curriculum to create activities for our students. So I'm logged in as my teacher account and I click on activities. And then I'm going to click down here to browse the activity library. And this will take me to all the different activity libraries. So we know the first one here is community. And that means anyone around the world that's using Seesaw is putting lessons here. The school one will be our DPS school. Um, we're working on getting that set up. So right now you'll notice it says sandbox on here, but this will be Denver Public Schools. And this is where lessons um, that we can share as a district from school to school, from curriculum and instruction. Um, so anybody can put a lesson in here and it will be available for just DPS teachers. But then let's click on my library, which is where my lessons are that I'm creating. And so I'm gonna click on my library. And then it's going to open up to activities that I have created, but I'm going to create a new activity and that's always the first tab. So I'm going to click on create a new activity and then um, I'm going to use a Bridges math lesson. So I'm going to call this math lesson one. And I could put math and I could also put the grade level um, here if I wanted to as well, just to kind of keep it so people know um, what grade level I'm working on. And then the lesson and then a title of the lesson. But again, consistency across that we're all kind of doing the same thing. And then here's where I can type instructions for my lesson. Um, so for my for my lesson, I can um, create instructions. And I know that when you look at the activities, you always see these really great things um, that show the different, um, the different types of, of cues, the microphone, um, all those things. And we've added that into the Schoology course so that you have access to it. And um, it's a great way for you to learn how to type these in. It's just a little cheat sheet, um, basically. And that way, then you can look at that to type something in. So for this lesson, um, you know, I'm, I might say that I'm going to introduce this to the students. Um, it's a visual model. I might give them some introduction to this. However, I want to teach my lesson. I might explain it to them. Um, so I can type any of my instructions here to the box to the students. And then the really nice thing is that I can voice record. So I can add voice instructions for kids who struggle with reading the directions. I can then put my voice in here as well. And then I can put an example. Um, so I might create an example that I would give to my students for that lesson if I wanted to. And I can add a template that students can respond in. So this might be where they would type their answers in some type of um, online option. And there's more options down here where I might type notes to myself. But up here, when you see these, it's the way that it happens is you might say students click on the, and then when I wanna put in like a link or whatever, then through that cheat sheet that you guys have available, um, you always put two dots and then whatever the word is and then two dots. Um, and then I might be giving them access uh, to that number rack here. Um, and that way then they would be able to um, go ahead and use that. And then I could say, please record yourself. And I could and I can put the microphone in. So again, there's that 
please. And then I might say record, which is a picture of the microphone. So dot mic yourself explaining using the number rack for the questions I have below. Um, and then again, there's the directions. I could read those directions out loud. And then again, I could have a response template that I upload here. Um, and I could put notes to myself down there. And then I save it. And give it a second for it to save. And then this goes into my activity library. So notice it's taking me back to my library right now because I just did it for myself. But notice there's the, there's the link and there's the microphone based on the two little dots. And the students could click on that in order to go to that to do the activity. Um, and if I was like, oh, I forgot something, I could always edit it. If I wanna add it to a collection, that's where I would go in and I would add it to a collection and um, I can create collections. So I could say these are all math, science or whatever. So that's a way that I can organize them. Um, and I can share this activity. So when I share it, I could email it to teachers or again, I can share it to our school library, which is will be the DPS school library. Um, I could get an embed code and I can get an activity link if I just wanted to email it to somebody. So different ways that you can share that activity. And then I will assign that and I'd assign it to my class and I can assign it to more than one class. I'm just going to assign it to that first class. And then I kind of want to see what this looks like and make sure that it looks good. So I can go in and add a response. And because we are we have that sample student in our classroom, I can go in and make sure that I'm doing it the correct way. So notice I can pull up the directions. Oh, I'm supposed to record myself using that link. So I'm going to have to use that link and then do a recording. So again, just super simple to create those activities um, and using our DPS curriculum. Um, and then sharing that with other teachers throughout DPS. Good luck on creating your first activity. Please let us know how we can support you.